I'm with author and book collector Angus Douglas. Angus, tell us about a treasure. Well, James, I think one of the great lost treasures of history has to be the account of Charles Rawdon MacLean's time spent with Shaka Zulu in around 1825-1826. Now you're going to ask me, well, who on earth is Charles Rawdon MacLean? Now, yes, yes, I've never heard of him. Yes. <laughs> if you've ever been to Durban, you would yes. know that there's a building there called John Ross House. Okay. In front of the building is a lovely bronze statue with a youngster, yes. ragged clothing, and he's got a carrying a spear in his hand, and he's known as John Ross. Yes. Now, John Ross, John Ross's actual name, it's not John Ross, it was Charles Rawdon MacLean, and he was memorialized as this figure, John Ross, because he famously, remember yes. the story, yes. he walks to Delago Bay, what is today Maputo, to fetch supplies yes. for the white settlers uh, in Port Natal, in what is yes. now Durban. And th these were, so, he had been on a ship called the Brig Mary that had run aground in 1825. And he was only, yes. uh, let's say 10, 11 or 12. He was an absolute young, he was among adults. He was the only boy there. Yes. And he arrives in this shipwreck on this very, very wild coast. Now you must understand, yes. it is so wild there that literally the people go around naked. And that is reported. On their very yes. first night there, one of the crew gets yes. eaten by a leopard. Uh, really? In, in the accounts, they actually call it a tiger, but of yes, course, it's yes. it's probably a leopard or possibly a hyena. Yes. Um, incredibly rough, wild jungle. You you know that area. The yes, mangrove yes. swamps there. Anyway, so within short order of arriving there, they say, well, we need to. Everyone's obviously absolutely. Uh, this we're talking about the height of Shaka's power. Yes, yes. On the eastern seaboard of Southern Africa. Shaka's terrain and the people there are terrified of him and they're very much in abeyance to him and they say well you can't do any, you can't do anything here you first you, know, you need to go beg and plead um, yes. at Shaka's court so within short order of arriving they, they weren't the first white settlers there were, there were already some settlers there some uh, poor settlers no, so no not a Finn uh, uh, Finn Francis Finn famously okay. and, and or Francis Farewell and, and Finn yes. and Isaac sort of sort of main settlers so there was already a a camp there. It was a very much a, a crude yes. dwelling, and they were living amongst uh, with whatever African servants or pe people who were maybe escaping the wrath of Shaka, yes. um, etc. Anyway, so they take a trip to go see Shaka. Yes. And as I say, he's, a, he's an absolute youngster. He's sort of 11 or 12, and by some accounts, he's only 10. But I would say he's perhaps more like 11, 12, could have been 13. And bunch of I can't remember the exact figures, five or six men, including Charles Ward and McLean, go to visit to say, Shaka, please don't kill us, please look after us, here we are, we're not going to do you any harm, and they bring him gifts, and, you know, to pay their respects to the great king. And Shaka looks on, on them fairly kindly, and um, it agrees to actually give them succor, yeah. to give them uh, yes. supplies and, and whatnot, yeah. but they stay there for, for I, I can't remember the exact figure, maybe it was a week or two, and as they're about to leave, Shark yeah. says, well, you can all go and you can take these supplies with you. Okay. But that little guy there, I want him to stay. <laughs> really? And that was Charles Rawdon McLean. And, and on hearing this, he was absolutely terrified. He said, you can't imagine how I felt that I was going to yes. be left alone in this, you know, savage scene, you know, amongst these fierce warriors. Yes. Um, and he describes this all later. He wrote a, an account in a nautical magazine uh, much later yes. in the 1870s. Yes. He died in, I think, 1880. So he, so he writes about this, how he's left in this terrible scene yes. of the savage king. Um, in actual fact, though, um, things weren't too bad for him, and he's something of a mascot for Shaka. Okay. And you must understand he's a little Scots lad with this you know, really? shock of red hair and yes. fair skin and... And of yes. course, um, he was actually treated very kindly by the Zulus and in later years wrote very compassionately um, that the British and the Boers should treat uh, the Zulus better. So he sort of wrote in defense um, of the Zulus because he, because he himself had been treated very kindly by them. And, and famously, he goes on this you know, 1,500 kilometer journey uh, to Delago Bay, um, Maputo today to, to fetch supplies, which he does. And obviously he's given a retinue of Zulus to help him. He doesn't go alone there. He's well supported on his journey. And he's got Shaka's blessing as well. So yes. wherever they go, 
they get exactly they get whatever they need because they've got sharper on their side but he stays there by some accounts as, for as long as two three years in the court of Shaka. can you believe it no one else right. has such close contact with king Shaka. gets to know him on an yes. intimate level yes now and he does write about it. sorry that book has been published in the 90 uh, i'm sure you you may have it yes stephen gray yes um edits the accounts that Charles Rawdon McLean uh, makes in the nautical magazine and so everything is out there in the Stephen Gray edition um, um, of that book so um, that is a publication that's out there I've got a copy of that I'm sure you've got a couple of co yeah. copies of the Stephen Gray book of Charles Rawdon McLean's account and you can even look that up on Wikipedia so that's all there but Charles Rawdon McLean says in that account, he says, you know, I'm going to write a fuller account of my time because the evidence revealed there, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting for what it is, but it's somewhat scant. There are some lovely little anecdotes, but uh, we're talking about, um, you know, maybe 20 pages or so, you know. Yes. Um, and it includes, you know, his, the entire story. Um, but he says, I'm going to write a full account of my time there and my time spent with Shark, and I'm going to explain it all. But we don't know where that is. We never get it. So, I mean, perhaps you could speculate that he never got round to it. He, by the way, he lived in St. Lucia in the West Indies in the, Carib in the, Carib the Caribbean. Yes. He was in the sugar trade and, he, you know, he was and he, and he died on his way back to England. He wasn't well. He died actually at sea in 1880, coming back from St. Lucia, coming to to England and, and he's buried there. Um, so um, the question is, did he get round to writing? Because this would be the most extraordinary account um, of, of King Shaka. Yes. And, we, and our, our details are scant. We don't know enough about Shaka. There's a lot of projection. EA Ritter's Shaka Zulu is filled with sort of juicy stuff yes. about you know the savage Shaka. And I can tell you a few things just off the bat that, that we know that Charles Rawdon McLean says. He firstly says, for example, um, well, he has a bit of prurient gossip. You must understand that, um, you know, it was a rather, can I go into something that's got a sort of vaguely sexual aspect to of it? Of course you don't can. Mind. <laughs> yes. So, of course, some of the gossip about Shark is that what made him so sort of angry and vicious and mean was that he wasn't very well endowed, you know. Okay. And this caused him to... <laughs> you know, this this drove the savage because he was teased when he was young, you know, for this aspect. Okay. Um, but in actual fact, um, Charles Rumagan points out that the, the king sat naked in front of his men. So however he was in doubt, he wasn't ashamed of himself yes. at all. He was completely, and he did his, 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 uh, his toilets, uh, so, to, so to speak. In other words, washing, the washing yes. of himself and the putting on of ointment was done in full view of thousands of warriors. Yes. Um, so you must understand the intimacy that people had with each other, and often the warriors themselves yes. uh, would, would have sat naked um, as well, you know, for parts of the ritual as well. So this is a totally different yeah. uh, type of setting. You can just imagine it for a young little Scot to land up in this. Um, and the other thing he, he, he says, which contradicts um, the record, is that you must understand Again, sort of prurient details about Shark. Oh, you know, was he gay or something? You know, um, you know, what, what, because he had this very strong relationship with his mother Nandi, and then when she died, yes. you know, he turned to real, he sort of unleashed terrifying brutality on the people, sort of, you know, out of out of out of, out of his grief. Yes, but um, he indeed had concubines, um, and now the story was when the concubines were pregnant, he would kill them because he didn't want to sire a rival to his throne. Charles Jordan McLean um, contradicts that and says, no, that's not true. They were sent away to another village or to, to be under another yeah. chief, but they weren't killed. Now, what that would mean, interestingly, is that today there are all sorts of descendants of Shaka. Yes, of we course. We don't know their descendants, and no one's going to know their descendants, but indeed there could be many descendants of Shaka wandering around, but we, but we don't know about it. Um, anyway, I touch on some of this. In fact, um, I use this wonderful character. Charles Rawdon MacLean as my moral ballast, if you like, in this book that has just been released called South Africa in the Name of the Father. And he was such an inspirational character on, in many respects, Charles Rawdon MacLean. So uh, towards the end of my book, I invoke his voice 
uh, and he speaks through my imagination. Well, that sounds fascinating. I'll be sure to read it, Angus. Thanks so much uh, for sharing that with us. Thank you, yeah. James.